The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Let your friends know that this is who you are. See, when I was growing up humbly, I would always declare who I was. And up to today, I would declare who I am. And beyond that, I tried in my mind to be the pastor among the pastors, to be the Christian among the Christians. Tried, set myself higher standards, higher standards that I will pastor the pastors when pastors meet. And when we were boys, I tried to be the best Christian among them. <laughs> I remember when I was in Thomas Secondary School, they used to call me Sir Holiness. <laughs> I've just remembered Sir Holiness. You see, because I set myself higher standards, and for them to give you, uh, this one is not from the Queen of England, this one is from my own colleagues. And I thank God for that. Set yourself higher standards. Right at the beginning, let people know who you are. And stick to it. Know what you stand for. Right at the start of his training, he made a firm decision. The people knew what he stood for. Now, Daniel 6 verse 5. Daniel 6 verse 5. Finally, this man said, we will never find any basis for charges against this Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. You know, he set the standards and now he's old and they want charges against him. They want some fault. They say, ask for this man unless, because they know his stance. Set, let people know your stand. Now, if you have been going out with this young man who is not your husband, as you go back, let him know your stand. Don't be going to him as if you are going to visit him. It doesn't matter. You see, doesn't, it matters. Let them know your stand. Don't let people be fumbling with you and say, oh, stop, stop. Let them know your stand. Let your lecturers know your stand. Let them know who you are. Taking a firm step at the start helps us keep our commitment as time goes on. When people get to know we are Christians and that we have certain principles, they expect us to act differently. And sometimes when they are joking and you also come in or you do certain things, ah, but you said you were a Christian. So now the people living expect you to act differently. Let them know your stand. Let us listen to Jesus. One of the most powerful verses in scripture, and I like it, John chapter 9, verse 5. John 9, 5. This is the master himself. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I like the King James, as long as I'm in the world. You see, he's saying that as long as I'm in the world simply means that there's going to come a time that I will not be in this world. But as long as I'm around, I am the light of the world. Declare who you are. Declare who you are. And that one is able to shield you. Declare who you are. Then in John 8, 12, Jesus said, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. As Jesus' reps here on earth, we are the light of the earth, and we must declare it. Jesus told the disciples, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. A town built, build your, your town on a hill, and don't hide it. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Don't hide your light. Lift it and put it on a stand. Let everybody know who you stand for and draw your lines. Draw your lines. Number two, be wise as serpents 
and harmless as the dove in dealing with the world. In dealing with the world, be wise as serpent and harmless as the dove. You see, because the world is a dangerous place. They are wicked people and they are wicked men. The world is full of trappings. The devil is a schema. If Jacob was a supplanter, then don't try Satan and the devil. See, he is a supplanter. He's a schema. And sometimes he uses many tricks to take away Jesus from us. So be careful and then be very wise in the way you deal with the world. Matthew 10 verse 16. I am sending you out like sheep among the wolves. So when we are saying we are unleashing you into the world, we are unleashing you as sheep among the wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as thou. Now, the snake, this serpent is shrewd. It is very subtle. It is only the snake that can leave you few in your room for the rest of your life, but you will never meet it. Snake can leave you few comfortably in your room. And you, you, you make sure that you don't see it. He says that be shrewd like that. And then innocent as a dove. So now the dove does not commit anything that will bring him trouble. Once you blink your eyes, the dove is gone. So try not to be somebody who is suffering because of your own evil. Try not to bring problems on yourself. Walk this way. You see, the Bible says that the road that leads to heaven is a narrow way. But some of you, you walk carelessly, you throw your hands about. That is not how Christians walk on the planet Earth. They walk this way. Because that road that leads to heaven is narrow. So how do you throw your hands about? Be careful and be wise when we are dealing with the world. Daniel made a firm resolution not to eat the king's food or drink his wine. But did so with a polite and respectful request. He should be a wise person to have served for, for over 67 years in the palace under four powerful kings as a foreigner. He should be a very wise person. And you see from the way he speaks, this is the queen of Persia's testimony about Daniel as recorded in Daniel 5 from verse 11. Daniel 5, 11. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. In the time of your father, he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom like that of the gods. <laughs> like this is the woman's testimony about the foreigner who has lived around all this. By this time, his age, he was grown over 70 years or 80 plus. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, I pointed him chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and div diviners. He said, this man is full of intelligence and wisdom. Over the years, this is the queen's testimony concerning that man. We need to be wise. In dealing with the world, we need to be extremely careful in how we handle our life. How we handle our life. If you are a lady, be careful the times you visit young people. It can cost you. Handle your life. Our time. Handle our time. The places we trek. Now, this leg is for you. Advise the leg to go to certain places and not to go to certain places. Don't let your leg carry you. Take control of your life. Your own body. Please. 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 The company we keep, we have to be wise. So far as the company we keep is concerned. The literature we read, the music we listen to, the time we move out and come in, we need to be wise. Number three, point number three. We need to remember we are the test of the gospel. See, we are the test of the gospel. And that in saving the world, the world sometimes will take all the trouble to test you and then get some evidence before they come and join your God. Why am I saying this? See, Daniel must have realized that the officials would not authorize his request for a different diet. Daniel realized that unless they were sure 
they would not get in trouble by doing so. I, I, do you agree with me? So because when he said, this, the man said, ah, my head is on the line. Do you want Nebuchadnezzar to chop off my head? Then Daniel says something. So he presented a reasonable proposal that they could accept. This is what he said. Please, test your servant for 10 days. 10 days, but not many more. 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. 10 days. And then treat us in accordance with what you see. Test us. It was a plea for 10 days test. A humble plea. As the words, please and servants suggest. The people of the world do not know much about God. They need evidence that he is indeed who he claims to be. They need evidence. Many don't think it is worth following Christ. They will look to those who represent him on earth for evidence of the relevance and the desirability of the Christian way. They will look to you for evidence and the desirability of the Christian way. We are the tests of the gospel in the world. So pass the test. Don't fail God. Matthew 5, 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let them see it, pass the test, so that they can glorify God who is in heaven. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 2. Paul says that you yourself are letters written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. So people are reading. As you pass by, they are reading. As you answer questions, lecturers are listening and they are reading. <laughs> when I was in a certain school, I, I surprised one lecturer. Because the man, the man trusted me. And then there was this issue. Um, <laughs> and then the people who were involved we were all running away. And, but I knew, I knew what really happened. So when we heard that the man was coming, they all ran away. So we went into a certain room. Then when the man came and he saw this boy, he said, you eat people. But he was surprised to have seen me. <laughs> so when he saw me, he was so disappointed. So Eric, oh, oh, <laughs> I still remember. God, this boy, so you too. <laughs> But the man left, because of me, he left the case. He just walked away. <laughs> the day I heard that he was dead, I was, I was sorry. I was sorry. Because I, I didn't, couldn't have any opportunity to, to, to explain this to them. Because he would not listen. The next time he saw me in class, he looked at me and he bowed down his head. He was a drunkard. He bowed down his head. <laughs> probably I should have passed that test I should have passed we are the letters people read people read we are God's letters people you are church of Pentecost letters and the big one is in John 17 22 and 23 please when you go home read he says that by your life you even prove that God really sent Jesus so sometimes by our cursed life, people think that Jesus did not come on this planet. Point number four. Don't conform to the pattern of the world. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Don't conform to the pattern of the world. Daniel distinguished himself. A clear difference. Noticeable and readable. See, Daniel distinguished himself. Made a clear difference between him and them. And it was noticeable. It was readable. Very clear. Daniel 6 verse 1. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satra to rule throughout the kingdom. With their administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps 
were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators that the satras by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satrap tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. This is a man born of a woman. He was not an angel. So if he did it, we can also do it. He led a distinguished life. It was not somebody who conformed the patterns of this world. Patterns of this world. Number five. The fifth point is that you must live modestly. Live modestly. You see, our quest for this prosperity gospel, and I want to be rich. I want to have a white color job. I want to do this by armies. According to 1 Timothy 6, 5 there, down, Many people have made shipwreck of their faith because of the desire for money, desire for wealth. 1 Timothy 6, 5 to 9. They have made shipwreck of their faith. Demas has loved this world. See, so sometimes we don't want to live modestly. We want things that we cannot get. So we strive at all costs. And sometimes we do that at the expense of our Christian work. But let's listen to Daniel. Daniel chapter 5, verse 16. Daniel 5, 16. Now I have heard that you are able to give interpretations and to solve difficult problems. If you can read this writing and tell me what it means, you will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around your neck. This one, Haman will love it. Yeah, Haman. And you will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Now listen to Daniel. Then Daniel answered the king, you may keep your gifts for yourself and give your reward to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. You keep your gift, but I'll read the writing. I'm not here for money. I'm not here for money. The sixth point Take up your cross and follow him. Life is full of challenges. We all have our crosses, but we need to take it and follow Christ. Just as he carried his cross, you need to carry your cross. We all have our own crosses or suffering we carry. That is the way our master led. And as servants, we cannot do otherwise than to carry our cross. In fact, in 2 Timothy 3 verse 12, the scripture says, 2 Timothy 3, 12. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. See, once you want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus in this world, it means that you'll be going against the current. And that one is tough. If we are bathing in the water, swimming, and you are going against the current, it is tougher than the current driving you. So it is tough. And then if you want to live a godly life as a young person in the world, you will suffer persecution. While evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learn them. As for you, as for you, there will be persecution, but stand. And continuing what you have learned. See, in chapter 6 of Daniel, he was cast into a lion's den by evil persecutors. He had not done anything to them, but he found himself in the lion's den, you see. But, see, he was a righteous man. And righteousness is a breastplate. And then with the breastplate that he has won, lions, they don't chew plates. Because you have to break the place before you get to the flesh. But here was the man wearing his righteousness. They can't chew that one. You may suffer persecution, but at the end of the day, you cannot be destroyed. You cannot be destroyed. Hmm. 
Jesus said, light has come into the world. But people love darkness instead of light because of their evil deeds. So because people like darkness more than light, when you are bringing the light, normally those who are in the darkness, they are naked. The darkness covers their nakedness. So when you bring the light, you are kind of exposing them. So they will oppose you. But let me tell you something. Keep on with your light. Point it at them. They will find something to wear. Now listen. When you bring the light, they will shout at you and insult you because they are naked. But please keep the light on. They will find something to wear. They will find something to wear. Truth is nowhere to be found according to Isaiah 59 verse 15. And whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. When you shun evil, people will persecute you. Now, the last point here is consistently stay the course. In the world, as a good Christian, consistently stay the course. Don't let persecution frighten you. Consistently stay the course. Psalm 37, verse 4 and 5. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. And I want you to pay attention to what he's going to do. Just consistently trust in him and delight in him. Delight in him. Don't be worried. Don't be flattened because of the prosperity of the wicked. Don't do that, but trust in him. He will do this, verse 6. Verses, if you can read together, if you can project verses. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn. Your vindication like the new day sun. Certainly God will show up and then lift you up. God will bring you reward, but you have to stay on course. Stay on course. See, Daniel was consistent with his worship of Yahweh God. For many times, under several kings, they praise his God, the God of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar seems to have believed in the God of Israel because of Daniel's consistent spiritual life. Now, listen to Nebu here. Daniel 2, 47. The king said to Daniel, Surely, your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of mysteries. For you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Now, chapter 4, from verse 34. At the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards heaven and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures for generations to generations. You sometimes, when we are doing worship, let's leave Psalms and come to this one from the book of Nisa. The book of Nisa is saying wonderful things, all because of the consistent spiritual life of Daniel. Consistent spiritual life. Uh, time will not permit me to talk about how Darius praised God. Daniel 6, 25 to 28. But where was his strength? He was a public figure. How could he do all this in the midst of the Nebuchadnezzar and the threats? His strength was in his spirituality. See, 1,095 days, he never ate any good food. It was only vegetables and water. 1,095 days. Because they requested for three years of just feeding on vegetables and water. Now he, 1,095 days, he was living on water and vegetables. For the sake of the glory of his God. What a challenge. So God was building him in the closet. His fasting and prayer life was something else. 21 days many times. Daniel, Daniel chapter 9 verse 3. Chapter 10 verse 3. Chapter 6 verse 10. So chapter 6 verse 10. Chapter 9 verse 3. Chapter 10 verse 3. This is study of the scripture. The Bible says that I understood by the books. 
So he was a man of the books. Yeah. Daniel 9 verse 2. He was a man of the books. A man of spiritual gift and wisdom. He was, he was versatile in spiritual gift and wisdom. Now when he was starting... The book, he told Nebuchadnezzar, when Nebuchadnezzar said, I've had a dream, and then I want you to tell me what is in my mind. And Daniel said, okay, give me time. Let me go and co- consult my, my, my friends who will pray and bring you the answer. Then later on, when you just told him the dream, he would just stand there and interpret. Now, he, he was growing now in the giftings. You tell him, he will interpret. In the beginning, he said, I will go and consult. That was a man of great spirituality full of wisdom. Now, God accredited his ministry with signs and wonders. If they put you in the lion's den and you come up alive, there is no miracle like this one. So let me just make this last statement. I want you to repeat after me. The man of God is made in the closet. His powerful public life it's a reflection of his private life with God. Be grounded in the closet and be unleashed in the marketplace. May the Lord be with us. Now, we don't want to end this message without giving you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you will, I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are. That today you want to come and join us. You want to come and join the Jesus' party so that we are unleashed to bring glory to God in the marketplace. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just repeat this after me. Dear Lord, acknowledge that I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins and be my Lord and personal Savior. If you have prayed this simple prayer, then I want you to know that you are born again. God bless you. And now if you are here, I want every one of us to stand up if you can. We want to commit ourselves to the Lord. That God will strengthen us the more. That we will be able to live that kind of spiritual life in this perverse world. The tips that God has given us. We pray that God will let it sink into our spirit. That we will be able to live such kind of life. That will bring glory to him. That just as Christ was introduced into the world, that the world must be saved. Let us avail ourselves that through us, the dying world will be saved. Shall we pray together wherever you are? In the name of Jesus.